Hi, welcome to Midweek Review. We're entering part two of our Devil May Cry review series, Waiting for the Reboot. Okay, let's get into it with Devil May Cry 2. Release dates. In North America, it was released January 25th, 2003. Japan, January 30th, 2003. Europe, March 28th, 2003. Europe, seriously, why are you always getting it last? You must have did something bad. And I don't care if there's European people watching. I'm not in a good mood. Um, genres, hack and slash, beat em up, it's the same as before for genre. Okay, moving on to gameplay. Yeah, gameplay! The gameplay is largely the same as the first game. You fight demons, though it's in an urban environment this time. The game introduces the ability to perform combinations in midair and adds an evasive button which allows you to dodge a roll. In addition to these, you can also weapon select using a button now. The so you don't have to go into your inventory screen to switch weapons every time. Okay. The style has changed not very much, but it's just the letter grades are different, so I'll go through those right now. D is now, don't worry, C, come on. B is bingo. A is, are you ready? And finally, S is now showtime. The DT has a new ability when you're low on health now. Um, it's called the Desperation Devil Trigger. I still have a bit of a cold, sorry. Um, which activates when you're very low on health and makes you basically unstoppable for as long as it's activated. From what I've seen, it's never activated for more than 30 seconds, but that could just be me. I don't know. Okay, moving on to characters. There's two new and very important characters in Devil May Cry 2. Let's go. Lucia is the first one. She's a new playable one. So, Lucia, alongside Dante, is one of the two primary protagonists of this game. The game represents her only appearance in the series to date. Lucia is an agile fighter. She uses two ordinately crafted curved daggers. Like Dante, she can also use the devil trigger, transforming into a hot bay. An angelic light demon, similar to a bird. It's appropriate, she's a woman. Women are also known as birds. Okay. Lucia is a member of Via de Marli, a clan of guardians that have the blood of demons in them. She invites Dante to her island so that Matia, her adoptive mother, may ask that him to help them defeat Arius, a man who's turned their island paradise sorry, island, into a devil's paradise. Uh, Dante accepts, and he and Lucia start their quest separately. Matier is the other character. She has a supporting role. Support roles are very important in video games, though they tend to be downplayed in reviews, I've noticed. So I'll just give a quick overview. Matier is a supporting character. Matier is an old woman, and like Lucia, is part of the clan of Via de Marli. In her younger days, she and her clan fought against demons alongside Sparta. Matier is cheerful and optimistic. 
than always seems sure of Dante's eventual victory. She is the one who guides Lucia to reunite the Arcanus mysterious relics and lure Dante to their island, to whom she never refers to by name, but rather calls him son of Sparta. At first, it is claimed that Mater is Lucia's mother, but it is later revealed that she wasn't until Mater found Lucia and raised her to be raised her as her own daughter. In the end, oh no, that's spoil it. I'll leave spoilers for the next bit. <sighs> bit of a drink first. Um, see the story. Okay, there's gonna be massive effing spoilers in this, but I don't care. I really don't. If you want to watch this part, be wary of spoilers. Devil May Cry 2 begins with Lucia and Dante separately entering a museum, where an important item called the Medagalia, I think is it's called, is stored. After defeating a group of enemies in the museum, Lucia invites Dante to follow her to the to the Dunmari Island, where he is introduced to Matier, her mother. Matier explains that she once fought alongside Dante's father, Sparta, to defend the island against demons. She asks Dante to help fight Arius, an international businessman, who is using demonic powers in an effort to conquer the world. Yep, businessmen. That's all they want. <laughs> yeah. After uh, la, 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 Dante flips a coin to make the decision to help or not. After flipping the coin, he decides to help when the coin lands on heads. After Dante leaves, Matea and Lucia discuss the arcana, the items required for us to raise the demon in Argosax. Lucia eventually confronts Arius, who reveals that she was his own creation. When she moves to strike him, he uses his magic to blast her away. Shortly afterwards, Dante meets up with Lucia, who gives him the last of the arcana before leaving. Dante then encounters Matia, who tries to pa who he tries to pass the arcana to. Matia in turn asks Dante to take the arcana to save Lucia, who has gone to fight Arius again. Dante flips a coin to make the decision again, and it lands on heads again, so he departs to a Lucia. Meanwhile, Lucia enters the Uroboros Tower. I don't care if I'm mispronouncing. If you really want to know the pronunciation, look it up. And attacks Arius, who captures her. Dante arrives, trades the Arcana for Lucia, then attacks Arius to escape. Arius forces Dante to decide between saving Lucia or killing him. Lucia, worried about the ritual and conflicted about herself, wonders how they will stop Arius. Dante shrugs her off, saying that he will find a way. 
Dante leaves Lucia to think uh, as he departs to defeat Arius. Montier arrives a short time later and sets Lucia's mind at ease, as well as persuades, persuading her to rejoin the fight against Arius. Dante arrives at the tower to find Arius in the middle of his immortality-inducing ritual. However, Dante is not worried as he switched one of the arcana with a false coin. Another fight ensues in which Dante finishes Arius off with Ebony and Ivory. Outside, Lucia confronts Dante and demands that he finish her because she fears she will become a demon herself. Before the issue can be resolved, a large stream of energy strikes the top of the tower and a portal to the demon world is open. Dante and Lucia argue over who will enter and close it from the inside. Dante offers to leave the issue up to fate. He flips the coin and it once again lands on heads for the upteenth time, leaving Dante to enter the portal and deal with the partially summoned Argo Sax. After leaving the coin with Lucia, after Dante departs, Arius returns to life bearing demonic power. While Lucia fights Arius, he finds himself injured and attempts to distract her, a tactic which fails, and Lucia goes on to defeat him. Within the portal, Dante fights and defeats Argo Sax finding the portal closed behind him. Dante instead drives further into the demon realm on a motorcycle. In the aftermath of the battle, Mattia attempts to reassure Lucia that Dante's fate, about Dante's fate, insisting that Sparta returned from a similar trip. Lucia examines the coin left by Dante and finds out that both sides are identical. Sometime later in Dante's shop, Lucia muses about Dante. Outside, the sound of a motorcycle echoes. Lucia leaves to investigate. The player is not shown if Dante has returned. Okay, development. Uh, Devil May Cry 2 was not created by Hideki Kayama or Team Little Devils. The first notice Kayama's team was given about the se any sort of sequel occurred during the localization of Devil May Cry 2 in North America and Europe. A mu move ugh, which greatly surprised Kayama since the game's release. Kayama has expressed disappointment that he was not called upon by superiors at Capcom to direct Devil May Cry 2. Instead, Hideaki Itsuna was appointed director of the sequel. According to producer Suyoshi Tanaka, the thrust of the design was to make Devil May Cry 2 bigger than its predecessor. Tonica estimated that the game's environments were approximately nine times as large as the first. The emphasis on puzzles was, al was also downplayed, with the camera system revamped allow to allow for better action scenes. Changes from the first game were influenced by surveys distributed by the development team, allowing them to patch any areas identified weak by those surveyed. In addition, the addition of Lucia as a playable character 
was a response to player complaints about Trish not being playable in the first Devil May Cry. That is it for development. Moving on to the last bit, which is the wrap-up. Gonna talk about who played Devil Dante this time. In this one, Dante was voiced by Matthew Common Sky, who was in the 2002 game Dead to Rice as Johnson, and in the 2011 game Dead Space 2 as Caleb Hedrick, the Microsoft computer, and additional voices. That's it for Dante's voice actor. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check out his IMDB page. Um, now, moving on. In my opinion, Devil May Cry 2 is a great game, but not the best in the series. We're coming up to that one next, I believe. I'll give this game a 9 out of 10. I, I will be reviewing Devil May Cry 3 for next week. Please tune in next, so please tune in. I hope you enjoyed the review. I know it sounds, probably sounds a little rushed in parts, but I didn't want to make it almost a half hour again. So, hope you enjoyed.